Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Butts UK podcast. Please remember, as always, first things first, go and click that like button below the video. Make sure you hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time we upload. We've got a very, very special episode for you today. We were very fortunate that we were able to have an interview with current Tampa Bay Buccaneer offensive lineman and Super Bowl champion, Ali Marpet. Um, just like the start, going back to college, really, in the two, 2015 draft from Division Three, Hobart, an impressive senior ball. Um, and what I Google, the fastest time offensive lightman at the Combine um, to the 61st player drafted. How was the draft experience for you and your feelings when you heard the Bucks call your name? Yeah, the whole draft experience is really cool. So, obviously the days leading up to it were very exciting because it was a pretty long process, right? So the scouting process starts, uh, you know, sometimes you're sophomore or junior year in college and you're spending months and years training and preparing for those kind of moments for that sort of reward. So I had, as you know, the combine and I went to the senior bowl, which is an all-star game uh, for college athletes. So there's a lot of work and preparation that went into that draft night, but the draft night was great for me. I was able to spend it with my uh, friends and family, my hometown uh, basement, just kind of uh, hang out. And uh, honestly, I wasn't expecting to get uh, drafted as highly as I did. So I was thinking it's going to be the next day, as you know, the draft is broken up into yeah. three days. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't expecting to be drafted the second day. We didn't really have that much plan to do afterwards. <laughs> Um, but uh, it was definitely an unbelievable experience. Yeah. How was it when the Bucks called your name? What, what was the family reaction like? So everyone was very excited. I think, uh, uh, so take getting uh, the call, like getting a call from an NFL team and getting drafted and, and multiply it by like 10 because my family was pretty much down here. So I had two yeah. siblings that were going to college in the area. My mom and my dad were pretty much like down here all the time. My other brother already lived down here. So it's like if there was a team of the 32 cities that I could have ended up in, it was so much more exciting just that I had a, a home base already. Excellent. Excellent. I'm glad, I'm glad you thought it was a great experience. Throughout your career with the Bucks the last uh, six seasons or so, the main thing I see about you is versatility able to play anywhere on the interior part of the offensive line. Um, how is that for you? Which position do you particularly prefer? Yeah. Uh, you know, you're a star where you are at this moment. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I think more than anything uh, uh, than the actual position. So I played, yeah, a couple of years at right guard, one year at center, and now a couple of years at left. I think I, I've enjoyed my current uh, position and role mostly because I like the guys I'm really playing next to a, a whole lot not that I haven't you know like playing to, with the right tackles and, and centers before yeah. but right now um, as you may know probably know uh, Donovan and I came Donovan Smith came in uh, our rookie year together right we we're talking about the draft yes. 2015 so it's awesome playing next to him because like when we talked when we first got drafted we go, oh it'd be cool if we played next to each other someday and here we are playing next to each other um, and then playing next to Ryan Jensen as well. So I think just the fact that I'm sandwiched with two really talented guys uh, is, is awesome. So I like my current fit right now. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty impressive unit at this moment. The whole line is very, very impressive. Um, Got to talk Tom Brady. That's, that's the big question everybody wants to know about. What went through your mind when you heard the GOAT was coming to Tampa? And... What's it been like playing and protecting the greatest of all time? Yeah, my so the question originally uh, was, what sort of changes is he? What, what really? What sort of changes is he going to make? What what like what is he really going to bring to the table? I'm not obviously he's going to be as advertised, but how is he going to like? What sort of impact is he going to have? from a day to day standpoint versus a, you know just a scheme and. Yeah. Uh, um, and obviously he, it's, it's, it's been unbelievable. I mean, obviously, again, the reputation of being able to play with someone like that is unbelievable. And then when you actually get to see him and he, again, is as advertised and as special as everyone knows he is, it's, it's been amazing. And I think that, uh, he really is, uh, such a high caliber person and player and just elevates everyone else's game. So it's so much fun playing with him. 
Yeah, is it is it is he like that coach on the field for you? He's, he's so um, passionate and excited to play football. So like, it's it blows my mind sometimes. So we'll be, you know, doing a walkthrough, very a very like. Uh, let's say boring stuff to walk through, right? Not like that exciting, yeah. like stuff you've done hundreds, thousands of times, right? But he's still so engaged, so locked in, and almost like has a smile on his face sometimes because he's like, how the fact that he can still enjoy it so much yeah. after 20 years of doing it is just unbelievable to me. And that's one of the reasons I think he's so special. Yeah, the, the passion after seven. 20 odd seasons, seven Super Bowls. It's, it's great to see. You've now got your first wheel. Look forward one day to seeing the ring fitted as well. That'll be great. Um, just the next question the Super Bowl was obviously the end of a truly extraordinary season. Uh, but my favorite play was the Leonard Fournette touchdown <laughs> and your block as, as, as you pulled around. How, how, this is just a personal question for me, and I'm sorry. How did that feel throwing that block and see Lenny run into that end zone at the end? Yeah, so it's the it's the kind of play that when you see that it's so each uh, week we go into uh, a game with a specific set of plays, right? And yeah. then you're gonna change it out week to week. But when I knew that that was gonna be up for the Super Bowl, I was <laughs> like, it's the kind of play you're excited that it gets called the night before, like you're in bed hoping yeah. it gets gets called. Um, Cause you, I mean, I, I felt like I was confident that it was going to work. Um, and again, yeah. So as soon as it got, it got called at the right time, uh, uh, Tom did a great call by uh, quick counting them. So uh, quick cadence we got. So it looked like one formation. We ran uh, uh, a lot that day and we run a different play. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just, again, I was, I was trying not to smile as I was going to line of scrimmage when I, when I heard that play call. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. That was one of my highlights, certainly of the season of <laughs> many. Um, what were your highlights? And when did you start to believe the Super Bowl could be achieved? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. Um, I think as soon as we had locked in the playoffs, right? So everyone always say you just need to get to the playoffs and then you can, yeah, uh, you know, make a run. You just need to get your, uh, you know, name in the ring. But like, I really think that uh, we it really is impressive. I think what we ended up doing right as soon as we got in the playoffs. I mean, we really had a tough. Uh, battle ahead of us, right? We had three yeah. uh, road games uh, to get to the Super Bowl, but it was as soon as we got into the playoffs uh, that I thought we legit have, as soon as that's locked in, we have a chance. We can make a run. Yeah. We have a good enough team to get it done. Um, and uh, it was cool for me because it was the first time I was ever in the playoffs, right? And the first time I was ever in the playoffs, we in the Super Bowl. So I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of spoiled then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's a pretty impressive record. It's uh, um, one last question for me. Then the Super Bowl was played in Raymond James. How was what was that like to play a home Super Bowl? And we got asked you the boat parade looked great fun on TV. What was that like to be involved with? Yeah, um, so the playing in the home stadium was very cool. I mean. Even though, so we we stayed at a hotel that was different than the hotel we'd normally stay at for a home game. But really, throughout the week, we had stayed, you slept in your own bed uh, versus during a normal Super Bowl week, you travel and you do media and you practice uh, yeah. in that, that uh, city. So that was that was nice, obviously, being able to practice and sleep in your own bed. Uh, and I think just driving to the stadium, it was just there's a the familiarity with it, there's a sense of, of pride being able to like, kind of bring it home, I think, uh, seeing all yeah. the, you know, this, the, the sea of bucks red, right? This, this is unbelievable. And then as far as the uh, boat parade, uh, the boat parade was awesome. It felt like a kind of a, like it was thrown, thrown to, like most of the season, it was just kind of thrown together, but it ended up being uh, amazing and a lot of fun and just celebrating with my teammates. I mean, like uh, that's, after all that work, I mean, it's, it was amazing. It's, it's, it's only a unique city like Tampa could have a boat parade where everybody else would have buses and so on. It, it, was, it, was, it was great to see. Ali, from me, thank you very much for your time just speaking to me. We know we've got some member questions, so I'll just hand you back to Alex. Great, thank you. Thanks, Ali. Thank you. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tim. Okay, Ali, so as you know, we are, uh, well, I'm assuming you know we are a members club. So we did ask our members if they had a question they wanted to ask you, and we got quite a few. So we're just going to share some of those with you now, if that's okay. Uh, so we've uh, sort of uh, grouped these questions, if you like. So we just want to have a little think about your catching ability to start off with. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the questions we've got on here is, if you were on the boat in the parade that Tom Brady threw the Lombardi Trophy to, are you confident you have caught it? Uh, uh, and then uh, we've also seen offensive linemen have their number called in goal to go situations. Is there maybe a play in the book for a pass to Ali Marpet? Uh, so I'll answer the first one. Uh, no, absolutely not confident that I would have caught it. <laughs> I definitely would have been the guy to drop it. I would have obviously jumped right in to get it, right? I would have been the first to jump in the water to, to get the Lombardi. But no, it's good that Cam was there to catch it. Um, uh, and then as far as... Uh, a play um i think <laughs> i don't think that's in the cards i think anytime you'd have a, a guard kind of as as a tight end uh who's like the regular guard i think that everyone's antenna would go up right the defenses would uh kind of know what's going on i think at that point so i don't think it's in the cards I, hopefully maybe i can get a fumble recovery you know that's i think that's my best best chance to score <laughs> but yeah Brilliant. Um, and then about the O-line itself. So when Alex Kappa went on IR, were the rest of the O-line able to pick him up and keep him him involved? And also, uh, you, you, uh, I think you sort of touched on this ever so slightly when, when we spoke about Tom Brady. But what has been the biggest difference for you between blocking for Jameis and then blocking for Tom? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so as far as Kappa when he went on IR, um, yeah, it, it's tough, right? When you know you're not going to come back, you're not going to be able to come back at any point for the rest of the season. Um, and it's easily, it's easy to sort of mentally drift, if you will. So I think it's important to kind of stay locked in. And I had actually been on uh, IR, I think it was 2017. I would hurt my knee. So I knew what it was like. And I think that, again, you do need to stay involved and stay engaged and focus on the rehab process. It's not always fun. and um, It's often very boring. Um, but I think that he was able to sit in on meetings and give Stinney some support and that we were able to, you know, engage with him, I think was very helpful. Um, and then as far as the biggest difference between J Jameis and, and Tom, uh, gosh, um, the actual blocking, I would say one, like everybody knows, Tom gets the ball out. <laughs> um, so that makes my job so much easier. And then also, but the, well, another difference is, uh, Jameis could sometimes make guys miss, right? So if, if even if he did get beat, Jameis could sort of squirm him out of there and do what he's got to do. But um, another difference for Tom, though, is he has such an unbelievable feel for the pocket. So, like, uh, as you know, as, as defensive pass rushers, right, are going through there uh, and, and uh, you know, you have a stunt or uh, – uh, whatever, just the, as the pocket gets collapsed, he's such a good feel just to take a step and like a small, you just need, sometimes you just need to take the smallest step in a certain direction just to avoid it. He's able to make his throw. It's, it's unbelievable sometimes for me to see the sort of awareness that he has in the pocket. It's certainly something to watch in telly as well, the way Brady plays the game. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're just interested about a few things outside of your football career as well. So uh, one of our members wants to ask about how the ukulele playing is coming along. And um, another question, you've spoken about your love of food. When you have come to the UK, have you managed to try any of the traditional British dishes that we have on offer here? So uh, as far as the uk. Uh, you feel well. Uh, I'd say that I pick it up at this point, maybe twice a week. I got I got to a point where like, uh, if there's a song that I like, uh, it like that's just sort of in my head. It's like okay, let's see how I can play this and see uh, if I can learn how to play this song. So I'll do that from time to time. And then love of food. Um, when I was when we were there for the uh, the game overseas, there it was. <sighs> I was only able to get a little bit. It's just a small taste, though, which is unfortunate. I mean, I've, I mean, I'm, I'm all in on recommendations for what, what I should be eating, where I should be eating. Trust me, I, like, I am the lover of food, so uh, I will take all all recommendations. Uh, if you ever come back to the UK, drop us a line here at Butch UK, and we'll give you some advice there, Ali, if you want it. I, I you have no idea how much I would appreciate that. <laughs> 
And then finally, just a couple of questions on uh, your on the future or how you see your future panning out. So uh, what do you intend to do with the jersey you wore in the Super Bowl if you haven't already done something with it? And how confident are you, are you that the Bucks will win the Super Bowl again this coming season? Yeah, so I think uh, for my jersey, I will uh, – it's in the process of getting framed. I'm kind of excited about that. I don't have uh, – I have my college jersey here, but that's about up, uh, it in my house. So I'll frame that jersey, uh, which is, I think, pretty cool. And then uh, as far as the – how confident we are, I mean, gosh, I think that I would – I go into most seasons with uh, – confidence that we have the ability right so I think that even though I had never made the playoffs besides last year every year that I'd gone the uh, into the season thinking all right this is the year we can make a legitimate run so I'm again I'm very confident that we can continue to do that um, but again a lot of things have to go right and a lot of work has to be done and you don't just show up and it doesn't just happen right so I'm confident that we can do it again um uh, but it doesn't. Uh, there's still a lot of things that need to go right, and a lot of work needs to be put in. And just to quickly add one more, if if you don't mind, do you think the fact yeah. that, of course, um, you know, uh, some huge re-signings over the off season, all the starters are back. That's uh, that's going to be uh, something that really helps uh, the Bucks have a good chance to retain or or defend the Super Bowl. I'm assuming. Yeah. So one thing that I mean, I think one thing that's unique to the NFL. Uh, uh, that's different than say at least uh, the, the NBA or the MLB or so like in the NBA, for instance, like your talent, like your talent pool can your, from team can vary quite a bit, right? Like the top teams are much, much better than the worst teams. In the NFL, I think it's a little bit more of a level playing field. And I think that the talent pool is pretty evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. And I think that any edge that you can have makes a big difference. And I, I feel like we have a pretty talented team and that little edge does make a big difference. And hopefully another off season really to work together, which you didn't get last season. That's right. Brilliant. Ali, that's super. Thank you ever so much for joining us. We really do appreciate Thank you, it. Ali. Thank you. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate Thank it. You. Cheers. Cheers. Brilliant. So I'm sure you will all agree that was a very interesting and exciting interview. A big thanks to Ali on behalf of all of us here at Butch UK for his time. Tim, is there anything you'd like to add quickly? No, I, I'd just like to echo your thoughts of Ali. Thank you very much, my friend. It was good to speak to you again. Hopefully see you all next season for another Super Bowl run. Brilliant. And Tim, thank you ever so much for joining me. And just before we do close off, I need to say a big thank you to Bucks Report, as always, for helping us to promote our podcast. We will be back for another episode in the very near future. But until then, take care and go Bucks. Go Bucks.